Let's join the match on Mortal Peace side. He has brought the lineup of Druid, Paladin and Warlock, while Random has brought the lineup of Druid, Rogue and Warlock. So both players of Druid and Warlock, only the difference of Paladin versus Rogue. We saw Paladin uh, fail in the last matchup pretty badly. So let's see if it can carry Mortal P through this one. Nice double wild growth start for the Ramp Druid versus the Zoo Warlock of Random of not doing too well. All of those cards will get replaced, which is great because of the fact that his original starting hand was just horrible. And this top deck Flame Imp definitely suit, should suit him well. So Mortal P, despite having very, very nice acceleration from the double wild growth early on, is gonna face a bit of trouble with this perfect curve from random. Flame Imp into Haunted Creeper, into Haunt Imp Gang Boss and Defender of Argus. Uh, I understand why he goes for the Wrath play. Because you definitely don't want to leave the 3-2 up for any longer than necessary. And when you play the Wild Growth on turn 2, uh, you can actually go for the Keeper of the Grove on turn 3 to go for the 2 damage value removal. With that hand, the order of play was definitely right. A bit less experienced player like myself might have gone for the coin wild growth and been stuck with the turn 3 which was not so efficient and taken 3 damage to the face from the flame imp for no reason. Now, Keeper of the Grove. That's an interesting play this turn because in fact, do you want to silence the creeper or do you want to go for the damage to the creeper? Uh, silencing down the Ink Gang boss would also be a pretty good option because that would deny the 1 1 imps. But if you go for the damage in the Ink Gang boss, then you can utilize the Keeper of the Grove to go for the attack onto it later. Hmm. Now, uh, unfortunately for Random though, Defender of Argus's are a plenty in Random's hand. So, if you go for the Defender play onto these two minions, they will be able to present. A critical threat. And you can utilize the 1 1 imp to finish off the 2 4. The zoo is looking really, really strong right now. Even with the Druid of the Claw as the 4 6 taunt, he'll be able to just throw minions into it and be done with it. Maybe even consider playing the second defender. Would that. No, that would not save any of these minions. So I guess playing the flame imp into a void caller makes more sense. And just throw the, the 3 1 gang boss plus one of these imps and probably the defender into it. Leave this taunted creeper up. Yep. Even though Mortal has bought himself a bit more time, the onslaught of the Warlock minions is really strong right now. Ancient Allure probably going to be forced to be used as a heal at some point. That's not something you want to see. This big game hunter will probably not have any targets, so he might go for playing it this turn. Or oh, he's waiting for the Dr. Boom value, yeah, I understand. Just the hero power is very, very passive, does nothing. But compared to the big game hunter, would the difference be that big? He would just utilize one of those smaller minions to destroy it. Maybe even ignore it completely and go for face. Turn 8. Not enough for combo. You do have the Sludge Belcher though. Sludge Belcher buying you 7 hit points while Ancient Allure only buys you 5 hit points. And there is 13 damage on the board already. The Belcher will be able to contest some of them with the 3 attack value, but more than likely this uh, Void Caller would be used to attack into it and then use the imp to kill it off and you would really not do any damage into the very very strong line of the Zulok right now. The 5-5 five five by itself will be able to take out the Void Caller. Uh, if he plays for the Implosion it's not gonna make a lot of difference, it's not gonna add many minions onto the board. The Doomguard, probably the best possible play right now. 
You could try and sacrifice the Void Caller. If you go for the Imp Gang boss first, sacrifice the Void Caller and the Imp, then play the Doom Guard for free. So that would also be a pretty good option. A guaranteed drop from the Void Caller, and you could just clear the board. What would the Druid player right now need to be able to turn this around? I don't think even a swipe would matter. Nope, the swipe would not def would definitely not be enough. The taunt would do absolutely nothing with the item be called. Well, there's a swipe. And the belcher. So, in theory, it's okay to have the belcher and the swipe. You could clear out some of these minions. Like this 4 3 flame imp. But, even with it. There's still the item B call and not enough to stop the Warlock from just rolling over the Druid. This is just playing out the Theatrics. It's gonna spawn more one ones from the gang boss anyway. If you haven't uh, gotten yourself something to eat, grab a bite right now, because we're just waiting for this match to end. Uh, this is just some elaborate BM from random, not showing that owl from his hand. And instead using the top deck. Power overwhelming. So, first win goes to Random and his uh, Zoo Warlock. At least it's a fast match, we might be able to go into the finals very very quickly if all of them uh, end up being like this. On the other hand, he does run Rogue and those matches can take a while if it's an old Rogue variant. If he uh, goes for the Druid, then yeah, <laughs> I was actually gonna say that uh, if Mortal P is running a Zoo of his own, he should probably go for the... Zoo right now, but he's using a Hadlock. Hadlock versus Druid. That's gonna be really, really difficult because the fact that if the Druid is running uh, the combo, you can be burst down really fast without getting value from your Molten Giants and things like that. It's still, it is winnable with the Hadlock, don't get me wrong, but we'll wait and see how this goes out, pans out. Random does have the Wild Growth. And the Wrath, those are very good starting cards, but the Innervate has no targets. That big game hunter will also be absolutely great value if the Mountain Giant or the Molten Giant uh, plays come out of the Handlock. We're just going to see more taps right now. Nothing too special. Turn 4. Actually, he might be forced to coin out the Twilight Drake on turn 3 because of the hand limit. Now, yep, coining out the Twilight Drake due to the hand limit. It's also a pretty good uh, card to have, which stops the shade from being uncloaked at any stage. Belcher and one half of the combo is there, and there's also an Innervate, so if he draws into the Fighters of Nature right now, it means that he'll be able to play a combo on turn 7. And if the druid player is able to push out the damage so mortal will actually be in range of the combo it would basically throw the game right there oh nice silence keeper the grove onto the twilight drake this has got to hurt uh, random can even use this hero power or cycle down the wrath for one yeah cycling the wrath for one and going for another card draw oh this is this is really really unfortunate for mortal and he's stuck with a hand of pretty much all the legendaries and no way to activate the watcher this turn the dark bomb not enough to kill the shade uh, well this way when you play the dark bomb into the shade the the shadow flame from the ancient watcher will actually be able to clear the uh, druid's board 
completely. And he did not draw into the second part of the combo. Had he gotten Force of Nature this turn, it would have been 14, 17, 22, 24, da 24 damage, and that would have been lethal. So there was a 2 in 21 chart, a chance of getting that combo to end the game right then and there. Um, still, it'll be interesting to see if he goes for the push onto the damage because the Molten Giants are a bit of a risk. Yep, not going for it. Instead going for the 4 or 5 clear, just so the Shadow Flame cannot be played. Exactly well read. Thaurisan, it's a bit greedy. Thaurisan is... Yeah, it enables you to play more cards next turn. Uh, the Sylvanas by itself would also no be a very, very valid option. Let's see, is Druid of the Claw charge Savage Roar enough? That's four, Where shall I strike? six, twelve. Th yes, it's lethal. So another top deck. So on this turn, he had four cards out of eighteen. Sorry, out of nineteen that could just straight up win him the game. So it is now two zero in favor of random. It's a tough matchup, really. It is quite hard for you to beat uh, the druid with a handlock. So he's only got the handlock. Oh, sorry, only the rogue left, random. So we will see a rogue from them. Mortal should probably pick his druid against it. Well, the handlock is not bad either, but it's an oil rogue. And oil rogues also have a lot of burst, so the handlock is... Well, as I get in a situation where he might be stuck at 15 life for quite a while and then just see the overwhelming burst damage of the old rogue go over him like a steamroll. Well, of course, as a Finnish player and a Finnish caster, I am rooting for my Finnish player here, but both these matchups are quite difficult or can be very, very difficult to overcome with a handlock. Turn three, nothing but a tap. You want to get those mountain giants out as early as possible. Turn four for the first one, and then probably turn five for the second one. You could actually argue for the Twilight Drake on four first as well. Twilight Drake, and then tap mountain giant on five. That also works. It's a very, very good starting hand. Goes for the Manjan over the Twilight Drake, so you'll have double 8 8s on the board. They threaten a lot more than just your basics. And if you are able to survive the next turn, which is quite likely since it's just turn 5 and the Rogue doesn't really have enough mana to execute their marvelous combos. You can Defender Fargus both of these 8-8s eight and be fairly safe behind your Taunt Wall. Push out 18 damage to the face. Actually, 21 damage to the face from with the Dark Bomb. And be very close to lethal. Is there any way there's no saps right now? If the Rogue player had a sap, it would be poison for the hmm. Warlock player. Oh, there we go. He got the sap from the Azure Drake. A little bit too late. You could prep the sap though. Double prep in your hand to use the four, four, four threes to clear out the mountain. Oh, wow. Wild Pyro means that you can't really prep the sap. If you would prep the sap, then you would just kill off your own dudes. So this spawn from the four three shredders was the worst possible option for the rogue right now dark bombing out the three two and then using the eight eight to go for face yep he lost one of the eight eights but it's not too bad uh, with the twilight drake 
still on the board. He's threatening 12 damage with just them. And with the Defender of Argus, it's lethal. So the Rogue has to handle the 8-8 somehow. The Sap will more than likely be played onto it. Oh, if he's going for the large... Oh. Hmm, interesting. What does he hope to draw from the sprint? Well, backstab definitely helps. Backstab, a double backstab helps even more. That's six damage on the board. Uh, you can prep out the sap and then play Edwin to be like massive. Edwin would actually be one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times two, that's 12. It would be a 14, 14 Edwin. No backstabs though, no respect for the potential of damage from the Warlock. It's unlikely they'll have 10 damage straight from the hand though, so I do understand the play in a way. And if he had gone for the double backstab play, he would actually put himself in a situation where, oh, yeah, you've got the humongous Edwin, that's true, but uh, the Handlock does already have enough mana to use a Siphon Soul. And if that had happened, then he would have been screwed. So, I understand why he decided to not go for it. Unfortunately for the Rogue player though, this Lothab will completely destroy your mana curve. And there's not much else to do except double SI7 or maybe just antique healbot hero power. So many and that's that's not yeah. He's not going to be able to clear the board since the AoE by itself costs 7 mana already. Is there a way for the rogue to take this home? With the heal bot, he'll buy himself one more turn. That one more turn might actually be really, really critical. Because if he is able to stay alive and is able to proc these Tinker's Oils into a massive blade, which you can then flurry away, you can clear the side of the Warlock completely. Oh, let's see. 9-11 from the board. Is there any way for him to deal another 11? Nope. The silence does nothing. Well, Dark Bomb to the face and then hope for Rag RNG if you had 10 mana that might work. But since you've only got 8. I think Thaurisan Dark Bomb is actually fairly fine. Dark Bomb the heal bot, Thaurisan the board. Uh, then use the 2-3 to take out the Tidehunter and go for face with the Drake and the Lothib. That would be mana efficient. That would clear the board completely from the Rogue, so he can't use the uh, Tinker's Oils effectively. Oh, well. You can also play Ragnaros. Uh, he's got the hit point pull. Uh, which saves him from the Blade Flurries. And you've already seen one sap go down. But there's the double backstab, so deckhand, prep, oil, uh, backstab into the 8-8 eight, eight and the 5-5, five, five. deadly poison your own weapon, you're gonna deal enough damage to clear the whole board, even without the second backstab. So, flurry now. Is it lethal? Let's see, it's 6, 11, 13. It's not quite lethal though. It's really, really close, but it's not quite. Opting to go for the hero power instead of the big Edwin or the SI7. Interesting. I would have liked to have seen an SI7 developed right now or the bigger Edwin. <clears throat> Molten Gen for free is a no brainer. Then Ancient Watcher, Defender of Argus, one could argue for that. Dark Bomb out to 5-1, yep. Oh. But the ability of a rogue to deal 4 damage to the face... I think that's just too, too much. Uh, you can activate both the SI7 agents 
And that'll be it. <laughs> Random goes to the final. Well well GG, well played indeed. Pure 3 0 series. Congratulations. We will see you in the final. Don't go anywhere.